Hello, welcome back to Retirement Clarity Radio. I am your host, Scott Newells. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm really excited that you are here. I have a special episode. Um, I was going to talk about something else this week, uh, but with the developments that we've seen in Russia and Ukraine, um, as well as just what we've seen in the stock market overall so far in 2022, I wanted to do a special episode on how to navigate down markets. So, so far, year to date, I'm recording this towards the, uh, basically at the end of February of 2022, um, the S&P 500, which makes up the largest 500 companies inside the U.S., it's only almost down 10%. It's dipped below that 10% um, just in this past week, um, but we have seen a little bit of a rebound. I try not to focus on the day-to-day minutia. I try and focus on the big picture. What do we need to do to make sure that we have a comfortable, fulfilling retirement and that we can get that retirement paycheck from our investments that's going to last us the rest of our lives? So that's what I'm really focused on. I'm not super focused on the minutia. So today's episode, I want to talk about big picture. How do we handle these down markets that we are inevitably going to see um, in this year and in the years ahead and in the decades ahead? And as we'll talk about um, just in a couple seconds, if you're going to be invested in the stock market for 20 to 30 to 40 years that you have in your retirement, you're going to see many, many down markets. So it's not a matter of if we're going to see them, it's about how we're going to navigate them. And so that's why I want to focus big picture. How do we navigate uh, what is going on when the markets are down? And so I've got five tips for us to keep in mind um, in today's special episode. So let's just jump right into it. The first um, point that I want to make, the first tip I want to give you is that 10% declines Uh, from top to bottom are actually quite normal. Um, So according to Guggenheim uh, research, since 1946, they noted that there have been 84 declines that have ranged between 5 and 10%, which works out to, you know, a little more than once a year. Um, And the declines of 10 to 20% have happened around 29 times in that time period. So around, I don't know, around 2.5 times uh, excuse me, every 2.5 years, there's a decline between 10 to 20%. Yeah. So every 2.5 years, there's a decline between 10 and 20%. So let's go back to that five to 10% decline, which happens basically every year, uh, which is what we're experiencing right now, um, at least so far into 2022. This decline that we're going through is basically as normal of an occurrence as experiencing the summer. So if you are not shocked when it gets hot and humid out in the summer, in June and July, when you can't go on a run in the middle of the day, which I like to do sometimes, uh, and you can't go out because it's just way too hot, uh, if you're not shocked by it warming up in the summer, then you should not be shocked by a 5 to 10% decline in the stock market. It's, it's as simple as that because these declines that we have are as normal as the changing of the season. Um, and that's that 5 to 10% decline. Now, a 10 to 20% decline, which we call could get into. We're not in there yet, but we could get into that um, at some point in 2022. That's that's fairly normal. Every every 2.5 years, we experience a decline of that magnitude. So, what I want to you know impart on you on this first point is that it's a normal occurrence to experience uh, these five all the way up to 20 percent declines. Now, less frequent is a 30 or 40 percent decline, but they happen, uh, but just not as frequent as the declines that we're going through right now. Um, Now, my second point that I want to give to you is that even though the stock market may decline by 10 percent, that doesn't actually mean that we're going to have a negative year. Now, this is a really interesting statistic that I found. According to JP Morgan, uh, since 1980, the average intra-year decline. So, um, you know, intra years basically uh, a decline that happens in a calendar year. So 2021 or 2022. Um, the average intra-year decline was 14% since 1980. So from top to bottom, the average drop that we experienced was 14% um, in those years. However, the average annual return of the stock market since then was 9.4%. So in other words, most years we're going to experience a decline during the calendar year and it averages uh, at a 14% decline. So that's a pretty big decline. However, um, (laughs) the stock market is not only able to get back even 
but the stock market actually averages 9.4% returns, even though we have those intra-year declines. So that's pretty phenomenal in my mind. It should teach us that even if we have these declines in February, like a 10% decline, it doesn't mean with certainty that we're going to experience a decline for the whole year. Um, you can also look back to March of 2020, right when uh, the coronavirus hit. The stock market was down by around 35%, and that happened really quickly. However, by the end of the year, we recovered all of those losses, and we were actually up around 18%. And again, I'm going off the S&P 500 um, with these numbers. But that's my second point that I want to give to you. Just because we experience a 10 or 15% decline, that one, that's perfectly normal. Two, in that calendar year, we could still actually be up. So I would not give up hope on 2022 just yet. Um, and that's the second point that I want to give to you. The third point, um, and, I, and I really want to you know, make realistic expectations here, um, is that every three out of every four years, we're going to have the stock market go up. However, that also means that one out of every four years, we're either going to be even or we're going to have a negative year. Um, and the reason why I want to point this out is because I don't want you to have too rosy of a picture. I don't want to give you any false optimism because we've had a great 13-year run in the stock market um, since the end of the Great Recession. And usually, not always, but usually after a great decade or so of returns, returns are more modest for the next decade. Now, is that a reason to get out of stocks completely and find some kind of other investments? I really don't think so. Um, I simply think we need to temper our expectations for more modest returns in the future. So that includes expecting years when our investments will be negative. Um, the last negative year that we had was 2018 when the market was down around 4.5%. Since then, we've had three years of double-digit returns, and so I think it would be perfectly normal to expect that this year, 2022, really could be a down year. Now, again, I don't want you to abandon a solid long-term investment strategy, but we do want to have our eyes wide open in terms of what to expect. So I think it's realistic to expect, one, that we're going to have down years in the future. I also think it's realistic to expect we're going to have more modest returns over the next 10 years than what we've had the last 10 years. Uh, the fourth point I want to give to you, and this is a show focused on retirement um, and people who are approaching retirement and planning for it, uh, but the fourth tip I have for you is that if you're in retirement, this is exactly why you have bonds. These declines that we've seen, um, the volatility that we've seen so far uh, this year, that's exactly why you have bonds. Because while the S&P 500, uh, again, all stocks are down around 10% as of this recording, there are numerous bond funds that are only down 1% or 2% or they might even be even. Um, so basically a solid bond fund is down one fifth um, of what the, a solid stock fund is down. So are bonds sexy? Are they fun? No, they're not. And historically, they're going to give you a lower overall return than stocks will over that long-term time horizon. Uh, but you should have some kind of bond allocation in your portfolio for times like this. Uh, so that if you ever need some cash from your investments, you can take it from the bond fund, which is only down a percent, uh, a percentage or two, or even, um, and, and you do not have to sell your stock fund, which might be down 10% or more. So again, my fourth tip for you, reason uh, what we're going through right now is exactly why you need to have some kind of bond allocation in your retirement. My fifth point, this might be my most important one. Boy, this is really important, is you've got to beef up your cash reserves. Uh, this advice is also not sexy and it's not fun, but it's it's critical. When people are working, um, I typically recommend that they have three to six months of living expenses, not income, but living expenses saved up in case of that rainy day. Uh, however, when you quit your full-time job and you start using your investments as a retirement paycheck, I would almost always recommend at least 12 months of living expenses saved up all the way up to 24%. Um, and that does depend on your comfort level and the particulars of your situation, as you would imagine. Still, I really think you should aim to at least get up to 12 months of living expenses ready for you in some kind of high yield savings account where it's easily accessible by the time you retire. Now, this can serve you in a few different functions. First, it will be a rainy day fund like you've had before um, in case something breaks, you need to go to the hospital, and you need some cash 
quickly. So it is a rainy day fund. However, more pertinent to this conversation is let's say that the 10% decline we're currently experiencing, let's say it gets worse. And let's also hypothetically say that it's going to hurt stocks and bonds equally. Now that doesn't happen often. Um, typically stocks are down much more than bonds are as, as I mentioned to you earlier. But again, hypothetically, just bear with me. Let's say stocks are down 30% and bonds are down not as much, but they're still down 15%. Um, and so let's just say let's just say that. Then let's also say that you need your retirement paycheck. You need your retirement income uh, because your financial plan was dependent on you getting money from your investments to live off of. Now you could, in this hypothetical, sell some stocks or sell some bonds to get that money, but you would be selling uh, those investments when the market is much lower, uh, which is not always easy to do, nor is it always the best financial choice. Uh, to make if we can avoid it. So what do you do instead? You dip into your very large 12 months uh, emergency fund that your favorite financial planner, Scott Newhouse, recommended uh, that you do. And then you can use those funds wisely, smartly, while you wait for your stock and bond portfolio to recover. Okay, so that's all I've got for today. Those are my five tips for helping you navigate a down market. Uh, number one, you've got to expect 10% declines, especially if you're going to be invested over the next 30 years. It's going to happen pretty much every single year. So just be ready for it. It's like the changing of the seasons. It's just going to happen. Number two, just because uh, the stock market or your portfolio is down 10% in any given year, that does not mean that you're going to be down uh, for the entire year. The stock market historically has bounced back. So don't get gloomy, don't get pessimistic if you see a 10% decline in any uh, during any year because it can bounce back even in that same calendar year. Number three, what I got for you is that you've got to have realistic expectations. Out of every four years, typically 3%, uh, uh, 3%, excuse me, three of those four years, the stock market is up. One of those years, it's either even or it's negative. So just be realistic in terms of knowing that down years are, are going to occur. Also, have a little bit more modest uh, expectations in terms of the returns over the next, I don't know, five to 10 years, um, especially considering we've had a last great 10 10 or so years in the stock market. Number four, if you're in retirement, you've got to have some kind of bonds in there because you've got to offset the ups and downs of the stock market. And I want you in stocks, but I also want you to have some bonds so you have a little bit more stability and you have an, an extra source um, to take money out of if you need it and the stock market is down by quite a lot. Number five, maybe my most important, you've got to have a beefy, solid cash reserve in retirement for those rainy days and for those really bad times in the stock market and in the bond market where if you don't want to sell anything, you've got some money in a high yield savings account where you can get money really quickly with a couple clicks of the button and, um, and then the money's yours and then you just spend that wisely while you wait for your stock and bond portfolio to come back up. So I hope everyone out there is navigating um, the turbulence in the market well. If you have any questions, concerns, you need someone to talk, talk you off the ledge of selling everything because that is the absolute last thing that you want to do, uh, please reach out to me. My email is scott at forthrightfinances.com, scott at forthrightfinances.com. So I hope you're all well and I'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks again for listening. As a reminder, you should consult with a financial advisor familiar with the specific circumstances of your unique financial situation before making any financial decisions. Nothing in this podcast is a solicitation for the sale or purchase of any securities. Any mentions of rate of return are hypothetical in nature and not a guarantee of future returns. Scott Newhouse, CFP, is an investment advisor representative of Forthright Finances, a California and Nevada registered investment advisor.